How would you respond to the person listening right now that says, okay, I, I agree, but the Bible does say train up a child in the way he should go, and he won't depart from it? Because we've gotten that question several times on the program, haven't we, Mike, yeah. where people say, well, yeah, but you know, the Bible does say this. So we can have this expectation. What would you say? I think we're so far away from that as uh, what we're, what's actually going on that it yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, oh. That uh, the cult of um, the perfect parent or the perfect child, you might say, is so intoxicating and mm. omnipresent that it's very hard to overstate how insidious it can be. Mm. However, I think that none of this is a um, should be heard, or I would have failed if pe- what people hear is that it's Im- not important to parent and to be wise and to the, God has entrusted these children to you and they are His, but you are this their stewards and. Uh, how can you best, uh, you know, uh, be fulfill that duty? Yeah. But again, you're approaching that as a Christian. You're approaching it from uh, your justification, from your enoughness, rather than for it. Mm-hmm. Great. The and, import, that's the all important mm-hmm. point, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I happen to think so. I, and the other thing to re- report is that what all parents know is I, I think about these people that live, uh, let's shall we say, close to me, and they have. Uh, they are what you would call disasters as human beings, and I happen to love them. But we're talking, you know, uh, shoplifting and mm. uh, just uh, bankruptcy and just nonstop reprehensible behavior. And they have the most delightful children you've ever met. Yeah. And yeah. then I have friends in our church who are the most solidly, they understand everything that we're talking about here. They are completely humble, and their kids are just the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, and and the long game. Who knows? In mm. God's God's actually in charge yeah, of God, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, folks. You know, um, C.S. Lewis a long time ago, uh, the Christian apologist said that uh, there's a real danger in uh, the cult of the family. This romantic idea that uh, we we. We work in the world, it's a dog-eat-dog world, and we, we face all kinds of challenges, and then we, we come home to sweet domestic tranquility. And he was pointing out, that that's, first of all, totally unrealistic. You're coming home to other sinners. And what, what David's telling us here is so liberating, actually, that we can stop pretending. We can stop imagining that our... Our value comes from what we can measure. Rather, it comes from what God did in Jesus Christ, and that his righteousness is credited to us. And when we, when we know that our righteousness is already uh, ours in him, then we don't look at our family and say, you really disappointed me. You really let me down because you're not the domestic tranquility. You're not giving me my sense of value you're screwing up kids spouse you're not you're not giving me my sense of purpose and meaning you you don't complete me when we you know when we when god isn't the object of our worship it's not long before the other objects of our worship become demons to us mm-hmm. And this is so important for us to understand. This, if you want to know how relevant and practical the gospel really is, uh, we're talking here about everyday life and just giving up on your idols of, I need this in order for me to be happy. I need this in order for me to feel good about myself. No, we need God and his good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, there is no other name in heaven or on earth by which we can be saved.